We're back with Fast Five, where our three panelists discuss five topics in seven short minutes. Let us get to our first topic, Antifa, moral equivalent of neo-Nazis. Is that a true comment? No, uh? it is not. Um, and I read the article um, where they made this claim, and I disagree with a couple of things. First, they're, they're really they're saying this because they react violently to to the neo Nazis, and they they will go out and confront. If you if you know any of the history of where the movement came from, it came in the 1930s from Germany, when the communists and the Nazis were fighting each other for control of the street. Antifa was actually founded by the Social Democrats, by labor unions in Germany that were, so there, there are three precepts to their initial philosophy. Now they have evolved, but their initial philosophy was based on three precepts, anti-fascism, anti-communism or Bolshevism, and anti-royalism. So they were, they were supporters of democracy. Um, that history was based on the fact that you, know, you had the brown shirts, um, which were the Nazi thugs that would go out and beat up anybody else. You had the communists had exactly the same thing. And the, anybody who actually believed in democracy in Germany kind of had to resort to the same, the same tactics. Um, the, other, the other big elephant in the room, you know, these guys aren't, aren't saying that people should be sent to camps or executed or anything else. So I, I think making the argument that there is some moral equivalency is just complete bogus. What do you think, Jim? I think that we throw around, around these terms for shock value. Terms like comparisons to neo-Nazis or to Nazis. Terms like racist. Terms like sexist. And I think we throw them around for shock value. And I think that, in my mind, they've lost their effectiveness because we just find a reason to call everybody some term that is problematic. So I, I you know, I don't. I'm very cautious how I use those words. You're cautiously optimistic. Right? I'm not cautiously optimistic. I if You're just if cautious. I if I if I call someone a racist, you better bet that I'll have proof before I use that, before that term slips out of my mouth. But if they're walking around with a swastika on their arm, isn't that kind of it is. proof it in is. itself? How yes. about they got a white sheet over their head or a hoodie yeah. on or that's something like that? Yeah. Well, let's, let's, there's a big difference between a hoodie and a white sheet Well, on your I'm head. talking about the hoods, the sheets that they used to wear. Right, absolutely. And yes, so they're, they're, again, if you got proof, that's fine. But we throw those terms around you know, this is racist. That's racist. I, I don't think that we're always right about those. No, you're, you're absolutely right about that. Colin, how did uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein's remarks about Donald Trump backfire on her in a meeting in California? I think that we're becoming so hypersensitive. Um, so the, the real, the real concern or the real issue there is she backtracked over something saying basically that he's the president and she hopes that he's going to be a good president and which set the more liberal side of California politics into a tailspin and that's because again we're becoming hyper sensitive and hyper political and what happened to the to the age where you could disagree with somebody but still have some modicum of respect now you, you reap what you sow in the case of certain politicians that get criticized so they're not necessarily somebody that you're gonna have a very easy time having a good rapport and respectful rapport however we should ra rise again uh, above the fray and and kind of behave like maybe parking back to a time where we could sit at a table and have a conversation. See, now there's a point where somebody that's a little more left of center thinks what they said in that extreme uh, left viewpoint in California, where it's wrong. It's not something, we just can't be going off on everything that happens in the country, whether, regardless of what side it is. Yeah, exactly, and, and I, I would think the more problematic piece, and I was not a Barack Obama fan, and I think that was pretty evident from you know what I've said over the over eight year period but I can also tell you I never hoped he would fail did I want him to get reelected in 2012 no I didn't but did I hope he would fail no because guess what if he fails I fail so fails. I think I think that if if we come out and, and number one I don't think that is the opinion in my view of the vast majority of Americans I think the vast majority of Americans 
can get behind that, hey, this is not the guy I want, and I know he's going to do stuff that I don't like, but I don't want him to fail. Very good. North Korea claims development of a hydrogen bomb. What do you think about that, Jim? Yeah, this is... Do you think they're claiming it, or you think they really have it? Yeah, I have no idea, but I can tell you that scares me to death, and it scares me both in terms of them having it and also in terms of our reaction to them having it. I think there is at some point a line in the sand when they cross it that we have to respond. I'm just not the smart, I'm not smart enough, don't claim to be smart enough to suggest where and when that is. Because I'll tell you something, and having a child that is, you know, fast approaching 18 years of age, if he wants to join the military, that's great. I think, I think it's great to serve your country. Uh, I would rather <laughs> not have any of our military people be a part of another world war. Colin, um, Justice Department just came out yesterday and said there's no evidence that there was any wiretapping by President Obama in the Trump Tower. Does that surprise you? I'm, I'm sure that the vast majority of the country is shocked, absolutely shocked. No, that does not surprise me. Um, and look, that was an accusation that was made, and it was potentially very dangerous, because that would have been an extrajudicial wiretapping. It could have been a scandal on, on the level of Watergate. And I think it's, I think that there has to be some, some taking responsibility for having made an allegation that, that, that dangerous without any proof. You know, it's too bad that when you, when you take the oath of office and raise your right hand, you don't promise to tell the truth. And then any time you lie, you're automatically committing perjury. Well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have many elected representatives if that were the well, case. Well, that, that might be a good The prison thing. population would be more yeah. swollen. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Washington County and Maryland unemployment rate remains constant. Are you surprised in that, Jim? Yeah, I'm a little surprised only because in the case of Washington County, I think we are definitely a lagging economic indicator. The, the bad times seem to hit us a little later than what they hit others, uh, at least historically speaking, and the good times seem to hit us also a little later than they hit others. So I guess from, from but uh, I guess I'm a little surprised um, I don't know where Maryland is in terms of how fast our economy does or doesn't react to potential problems in the economy. I think that, I th and I don't see necessarily a potential problem in the economy, but I think it's interesting and I think it's something that deserves to continue to be monitored. Well, and here's, here's something to, to talk about real fast on that. What impact, because Maryland is to a large degree dependent upon the federal government, what impact are all the federal cuts going to have on the state of Maryland? And is that part of why our economy is, is remaining a little bit stagnant? Well, you know, that's, but it remained unchanged. So uh, yes, it is stagnant. Um, but it hasn't gone down. No, right? it hasn't gone down. But you're right, I, I wondered that too. I, I think that the federal impact on, on the state of Maryland is significant. Mm -hmm. You've had the last word on that, Jim. Stay tuned, thumbs up, Thumbs down is next.